tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Gordon goes to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, to help a family business in ruins. This restaurant's sucking the life right out of me. Three sisters who are all on the verge of a breakdown. We have no passion and we have no drive and I don't even know how to get that back. Their niece may be the chef, but she wants out. This is not a career choice for me. This close family is falling apart. We don't enjoy each other's company. Losing customers by the day and losing hope by the minute. We need to pull it together. But I don't know what else to do. And when Chef Ramsay arrives, he is confronted with a number of problems. It tastes dreadful. There's nothing that we don't freeze here. Yeah. You just served me three-week-old frozen potato skins. And the one problem he refuses to put up with is the owner's pathetic attitudes. We don't know anything. For the first time ever, Chef Ramsay chooses to leave. Goodbye! Find out exactly why Chef Ramsay makes the most dramatic day one decision in Kitchen Nightmares history. No one cares here. We're so freaking buried and so lost. Is failure finally an option in Philly? This is our last hope. We're about to find out on a heartbreaking episode of Kitchen Nightmares. I don't want to close a restaurant. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, the birthplace of American independence, and home to more than 1.4 million people. Two years ago, Sister Claire and Catherine, along with their sister-in-law, Erin, decided to open the Hot Potato Cafe in their East Philadelphia community of Fishtown, where they all grew up. One day, we just kind of looked at each other and said, somebody should open a really good restaurant in Fishtown. Hi, welcome to the Hot Potato. We thought it would be a lot of fun. People would just walk around the corner and hang out here. How have you been? I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah. Our intention when we opened Hot Potato was to make this a very comfortable, casual, friendly environment. We bring a lot of our friends here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Anybody new in town, we're we'll taking this oh, restaurant. Thank you so much. <laughs> we did the fun things, like, oh, we're picking out salt and pepper and all that cute stuff. I don't think. You can even wrap your mind around how big it is to open a restaurant. Oh, my Shut God. Me. We were open for about eight months, and we had a really, really bad review. A local paper had come in, and they wrote an article, and it, they called us spuddy hell. They ripped us apart. Like one stroke of the pen, and you're done. There we were sitting inside waiting for customers to come, and they weren't coming. That's when we, you know, really started scraping together some money. It's just overwhelming. The three of us all chipped in pretty much our whole life savings. So we paid insurance lately? No, I get... we owe them like $780 on insurance. What the fuck? We knew we didn't have the experience that we needed in that kitchen, and we couldn't afford to hire somebody. I think it's good. What is it? Did this go out? My niece, Danielle, had some back of the house experience. Got it. I saw my eyebrow. Come on, Danielle. Even though I don't want to be uh, a chef for a career, I was willing to help her out any way I could. How's that uh, New York strip doing? Charboil on the outside, that one? I don't even know how to charboil on the outside. We doing anything right around here? What? I mean, it's just not good. This restaurant has put tremendous stress on the family. You know, it's hard. We don't have a clue about what we're doing. But we don't. At times, it feels like this restaurant's sucking the life right out of me, out of all of us. Fuck! I'm just so frustrated. Somebody's got to do something here. We're dying. I'm here in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, to check out a restaurant that isn't getting much love from anybody. Now, according to a recent review, they refer to the Hot Potato Cafe as Spuddy Hell. That doesn't sound very interesting, does it? Here we go. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, how are nice you? Nice to see you. <laughs> oh, Claire. Claire, nice to see you, darling. You too. Good to see you. With Gordon Ramsay here, it's like winning the lottery for us. My Kathy, sister, how are you, Kathy. Nice to Good to see you too. Me too. Hi, I'm Erin. Erin, oh my god. Without Chef Ramsay's help, I don't think we'd see three months. Everything that we have has been depleted. Philadelphia Weekly is quite an influential it newspaper. Is, yes. it, it closes restaurants and 
makes them successful. Yes. The review, it's bloody hell. It hurt, yeah, it hurt us big time. So, what's wrong with the restaurants? Huh? Normally when I ask owners what's wrong with the restaurant, I get some form of response. I don't feel like when people come here and eat, we get really bad complaints. No. People it's walk not. in, they say, oh, it's really cute in here. We like the colors, it's pretty cool. So it's not the food? Not the decor? We don't know, honestly. We're we at a loss. Yeah. That makes it 10 times harder for me. I need to hear the truth. So who's the head chef? Our niece, Danielle. And that's your niece? Yes. This is all very close. Nick, <laughs> but how old is she? 21. 21? She hasn't even had a chance to learn yet. Christ. What's the speciality of the house? Crab cakes. Crab cakes. Name your other? Shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie. Pierogies. Pierogies. How weird is that? Three owners, not one of you recommending a potato. <laughs> Did we decide? So I didn't catch your name? I'm Brian. Brian, good to see you. Nice to meet you. So um, let's start off with the hot potato soup. All right. And what kind of baked potatoes are there? Spud skins. OK. And they're all fresh? They are fresh when they come in. We do cut them, and then we freeze them, and then pull them to order. So they're not fresh, they're frozen? C correct. So they're hot potatoes, frozen potato? Or lukewarm potato. Depends on what shift you come in on. That sounds intriguing. I'll go for that, please. OK. And finally, the shepherd's pie. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Oh, wow. Is that all for him? Come on, Danielle, the pressure's on. Potato soup. Never, ever, ever have I cooked for someone of such caliber. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> the hot potato soup. Hot potato soup. Thank you. You're welcome. You're sick. He looks a mess. That is a mess. Oh my god, we just made a roast fucking god awful face. Holy mackerel. Mm. It's like lumps of glue. What a fucking embarrassment. Fuck. How's the soup there for you? Uh, yeah. It's like it's been made out of leftover mashed potatoes. Are you fresh every day? They make it probably every other day. Every other day. Definitely not today. It's just crazy. Crazy. Thank you, Brian. Beautiful sunny day outside and thick, rich, bland stodge on the inside. What a shame. He didn't like the soup. He didn't? Bland. Bland? Oh, my god. How's the um, skins? They're fine. OK. These mm -hmm. are your ranch and bacon potatoes. OK, great. Thank you. Right, hot potato cafe. Baked potatoes. If these are the frozen ones. They're the frozen ones. God, they taste dreadful. When were they baked? Probably about three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. I know it may sound like a stupid question. If they were baked three weeks ago, where's the filling gone? We use the filling for the mashed potatoes. So my potato's been sold already? Yes. This restaurant's called Hot Potato Cafe. It is. Yeah, and you just served me three-week-old frozen potato skins that have no potato inside. I feel like a, I'm a potato organ donor. How strange. <laughs> no, you laugh. I'm glad you find it funny, because I don't. I'm sorry. No, no, I don't want you to be sorry. I'd be fucking embarrassed if I had to serve that. <sighs> anyway, next. Okay. All right. I'm going to go kill myself in a kitchen. It's hard to hear sometimes when somebody comes in here and tells you how bad your food sucks. It's like someone calling your kid fucking ugly. It's hard to hear. Oh, my God. What was he saying? That we should be embarrassed. We baked potatoes three weeks ago. So he's like, so somebody else ate my insides, because I said we used them for mashed potatoes. Oh, my God. Well, we did. I know, but when you see here broken down like that, it's all god awful. I can only do so much, you know? I've been given these recipes, and I'm just rolling with them, and I'm completely lost myself. I'm going to bring out the shepherd's pie. Say a rosary before you walk out the door. And remember, the bowl's hot. Gotcha. And we have the shepherd's pie. Besides that portion. Mm. I got two thirds mash and one third of greasy minced lamb. That's not the shepherd's pie I know. I'd like them to taste that, because each and every one of those owners need to know what kind of shit has been served. You got it. My God. 
Josh. He wants all three of you to taste the shit that you serve people. All right, give me a spoon. That's like something you get in the cafeteria at college. It does suck. It was like, hello? I think maybe I have, like, the palate of a five-year-old or something. Obviously, we don't know anything. After a sampling of what has been referred to as spuddy hell, Holy fuck. a disappointed Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen to meet the owner's 21-year-old niece and head chef, Danielle. How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. You're the head chef? Yeah. Where did you study? Uh, I actually have no formal experience. So I've you're not even a trained chef? No, not at all. Jesus. Why did you come here as the head chef? Just to help out the family, that's Just it. Just to help out. This is not a career choice for me. Damn. Is there anything on that menu that you put on yourself personally, or is it the kind of shit you've inherited before you came here? I haven't put anything on nothing. that menu, nothing. You just continued yes. processing that crap. I can't blame you entirely, because you shouldn't even be cooking here, yet you're forced to do it because of family reasons. But more importantly, you haven't even been given the chance to cook or to learn how to cook properly. It's right about everything he said. Um, so hopefully he just knows how to help us out. Is there anything that we don't freeze here? No. There's your answer. The food is shit. God bless that critic. Spuddy Howe, right now, was being very kind, because the food is dreadful. OK, see you later. See ya. I'll be back. Unbelievable. Here, we've got a situation with a menu passed down from a bad chef to an inexperienced chef, and all three owners call it comfort food. It's frozen food, and I'm not comfortable about that at all. Coming up... What I saw tonight was embarrassing. It's a kitchen nightmarish moment you won't forget. It's clear you've given up. The shocking showdown that led to this. I'm done. I'm out of there. Gordon! We're so freaking buried and so lost. I can't help any of you. Sensing a lack of passion by everyone in the restaurant, Gordon returns to the Hot Potato Cafe aye, aye, aye. to have some private time with each of the sisters. What's the total debt across the board? A little over a quarter of a million dollars. Jeremy, it's a fucking lot of money you're backed up with. Yeah, we're never going to get out of this. You've never made money in two years? We did not. We had no clue what we were doing, obviously. What's it done to three of you in comparison to what it was like two years ago? Well, I guess... Two years ago, we had high expectations. Everybody was happy, giggly, getting along. And now it's just, you know, it's just so tedious. And we don't enjoy each other's company like we used to. How do you stay motivated? I don't think I am motivated. I'm just trying to get through the next day, mm -hmm. day by day, and hopefully just enough to pay the bills and enough mm -hmm. to just keep us afloat. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do. But I feel like if we shut the door, then we're really screwed. OK. Listen to me. Tonight, I need to see a fight in this dinner service. I need to see you stand strong and fight for this business by pulling on the rope. You need to find that internal flame first. OK. Because I can't work with corpses. OK? Thank Promise? You. Promise. Do you care? I do care. You do, have you given up? Not completely. No. Show me tonight. OK. Yes? All right. This is our last hope here. We need to pull it together. And frankly, I don't even know if we could do that. But I would try. We have two, four, five. News has spread that Chef Ramsay is in Philadelphia. Hi, welcome to the Hot Potato. And the Hot Potato Cafe is packed. Ready to order? I'm going to do the crab rose. Let me get the uh, beef burger. How would you like that done? Medium rare. All right, Claire, I want to hear you tonight. All right. As orders pile into the kitchen... All right, here we go. Chef Ramsay will be focusing on the owner's leadership skills and their willingness to fight for their restaurant. Who's hot potato soup? Anybody have a clue? Oh, that looks like a sloppy dog mess. Nice. Whose soup? Is this your soup? Mary. Mayor, here's your soup. I'll try to expedite. I try to help them out. They, they look freaking raw. All right, just give them to me. I don't know if I'm doing it right. This is going to be three. Pierogies and spring rolls you together. Just moved it. Wait, Brian, no, take, take it. it. Fucking pay attention. 
got to calm down. Well, you're confusing the hell out of us. Who's in charge? Is Danielle calls out the orders, or...? No? I don't know what's going on. There's no proper support in there, and it's fucking crazy. Come on. It's like no one cares. My aunts, they're giving up, and now it's just slipping through their fingers. We're a fucking mess back here. I need table five. It's ready. With Claire expediting without any standards for quality control. Can you drop those fries, Aunt Kath? And Catherine standing by and doing almost nothing. Show me you care. Danielle manages somehow to get the entrees out on time. Hot potato chips. Good. This is so sad. I've come to accept it. It's sad that I have to accept it, but it's the only thing I know here. No one gives a fuck. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What I saw tonight was embarrassing. So sad to see no structure, no, no togetherness. To my amazement, Daniel kept it together for her aunts. She just head down and focused like a chef. It's really weird because she's not even trained as a chef, but she just took it in. Claire, Catherine, where's the motivation? Where's the spirit? Anybody? He's right. We have no passion and we have no drive. Everybody's so tired. I guess the fire's gone. I I don't know what else to do. If this was my restaurant, I'd be fighting. Every table, every plate. You, you, and you, it's clear you've given up. It's on your faces, in your eyes, and it's clear, not just to me, but to your customers. I honestly thought when Gordon showed up, like, he's just going to come in, and he's going to tell us what's wrong, and he's going to fix us. And he's like, no, that's not how it's going to go down. I said to you this morning, one thing I need to see is the fight, the determination, and the grit. No one gives a shit. It's like zombies. I honestly don't know if you've got the passion and the drive to take it through. I'm really sorry. I'm left with no choice. I'm done. No. No way. No chance. I'm out of here. Guys, get the fuck out of here, will you? Pick up and fuck off! No one cares here. Fuck that. It is embarrassing. We're screwed. I didn't want to fail. But I feel like we're way beyond that at this point. I don't want to close the restaurant. I can't do it. No one cares here. For the first time in Kitchen Nightmares history, just hours after arriving, I can't do it. Chef Ramsay has made a drastic decision and has decided to leave. Can we just go talk to him? Aaron. He just went down the street. Gordon! Gordon! This sucks. We really need your help. Can you just help us, please? Honestly, from, you know, from my point of view, no one cares. No one cares. If, if you three don't care, why should I care? It's not that we don't care. I just think we need help. I don't think... I mean, we do care. We care about each other. We care about this business. We just feel like we're so freaking buried and so lost. <laughs> Please help us. It's not normal to be in this situation and work with a family that don't give a shit. I can't jump on Danielle. And she's so heartbroken. She doesn't want to disappoint you. That's a young woman. If you weren't her aunt, she would have told you to fuck off long ago. Come on. Isn't that enough to see what you're doing? The shit food. 
The shit complains, and it's like it's all over your head. There's no feeling left in any of you. And when there's no passion or heart involved, I can't give you that. It's like we can't see a light at the end of the tunnel. And we weren't always like this. We weren't. We give a shit. We do, honestly. I don't think we don't have heart. I just think we're tired. And we're frustrated. And we're out of money and we're out of ideas. And we just don't know what to do anymore. And we did whatever we could to make this business work. We're scrubbing toilets. I thought that was passion and heart. We we'll really care. And we do. We just need help. We really need your help. Please help us. Don't leave. OK, this is the most open you've been in terms of honesty. I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass. You asked me to come here and help you. I can't help any of you if you're not going to start helping yourselves. Philadelphia, look at it down there. That city center down there needs to know that there's a heartbeat inside the Hot Potato Cafe. And there's barely a pulse between all three of you. Are you committed? We are, yes. I need to see it, and I need to see it quickly. You've got to seriously snap out of it and fight for this. It has to come from us. It has to come. You're exactly right. We'll do whatever it takes. I am 100% committed to all three of you. In return, you've got to be 200% committed to what I'm doing. And tomorrow, we turn a page, and we fight back. OK? I'll see you in the morning. Right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Holy shit. Very, very few people in the world have an opportunity to have a world-renowned chef walk into their restaurant in the middle of Fishtown and offer us help. And, you know, we need to pull it together. With the belief that the three owners are now truly committed to the restaurant, Chef Ramsay returns to help. So, today, let's start off with something fresh. Let's do something new. Let's do something together. And his first order of business is to focus on what he thinks Hot Potato Cafe should obviously be known for, fresh potatoes. Let's take one potato, broil it, gratinate them. Each of you come up with a fill-in, and let's have a taste. Yeah? The best tasting potato goes on the menu tonight. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Chef, excited? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Excellent. OK, let's go. So, there's the potatoes, whatever you wish. OK. But let it go, yes? All right. Excellent. The idea behind this is coming up with a stunning hot potato dish that we can evolve and tweak and go on the menu, yeah? Why didn't we go with fresh potatoes? So simple, so easy, but so good. Crazy. <laughs> OK, into the dining room. Right, take them in, onto the round table. Yours looks okay. cute. Thank you. OK. So, what is that? It's a classic baked potato topped with butter, sour cream, and chives. Nice. What, you served the potato inside the skin? I did. Amazing! <laughs> so you just served me three-week-old frozen potato skins that have no potato inside. I'd be fucking embarrassed if I had to serve that. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you very much. It looks amazing. I think he was very impressed by my potato. And the fact that I used the same stuffing in the same potato on the same day was like, oh, my god. Claire, let's taste yours first, because one of them this is, is going to go on the menu. So sour cream, chives. Butter, salt, butter. pepper, chives. Mm. A little bit too much of a plain Jane for me. Could have done better. Oh. So boring. Erin, what's inside there? I scooped out the potato. Yep. I mashed it with a little yeah. butter, a little green onion. Mm -hmm. No cheese on there. No cheese. Yeah, I mean, it's seasoned nicely, but it just needs a little bit more. A little more. You have to take it to a, another level. Mm hmm And this one was made by? Catherine. Kath. Now, inside is what? Parmesan cheese, heavy cream, salt, pepper, and garlic. One problem, too much garlic. Moreish taste, more, 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 but all of a sudden, bang, there's powerful garlic flavors hitting you. This is Danielle's. Danielle's. And what's inside there, Danielle, please? We got the roasted red peppers, spinach, um, mm -hmm. some onions, and then top of Parmesan cheese. That's really good. Love the Christmas skin. I really like that. Really good job. I like that one. That's Go. good, Danielle. Thank you. Danielle's goes on the menu. Danielle, great job. Delicious. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chef Ramsay today has definitely ignited a passion inside of me. My passion for cooking. It's definitely brought it, brought it right out of me, pulled out of the woodwork inside. <laughs> Coming up, 
Danielle gets a chance to shine. You're the chef. Tonight, you've got to prove it. Any shepherd's pie? I have enough for these three. That's it. But will the 21-year-old head chef help or hurt the future of the hot potato? Danielle, you need to take control. I don't know where you left off. Oh, and you won't believe what Chef Ramsay does to make her cry. Aside from the level of commitment Chef Ramsay is now getting from the owners, okay. he is also starting to believe in the talent of Danielle. So before dinner service, he gives her the secret of how to make a great shepherd's pie. Foremost important part, yeah, minced lamb. Proper shepherd's pie has 100% lamb in there. Chef Ramsay's style. I mean, I couldn't tear my eyes away from what he was telling me. Really get some good color on that, yeah? So we two thirds mince and one third vegetables, yeah? To cook side by side with Chef Ramsay is the biggest honor that I, I've ever had in my life. If anyone complains about that shepherd's pie, doesn't deserve to be in here. Right. Hi, welcome to the hot potato. How's everybody tonight? Everybody hungry? Good. I'm really excited for tonight. I feel like there's been new energy pumped back into the restaurant, and we're ready to give it a go. Tonight's dinner service menu features two specials, Daniel's Tasty Potato Florentine and the Shepherd's Pie. Yeah, what are the special appetizers? Special. Potato Florentine. And what can I get for you this evening? The Shepherd's Pie. OK, Daniel, you're the chef. Tonight, you've got to prove it. Let's go. we got Potato Florentine with spring rolls, Shepherd's Pie, two Shepherd's Pie, and then two of our special potato. How long on the Potato Florentine? I got it. All right. Here. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. I've tried this. Good. Three left. Wow. Three shepherd's pie. How many potato florentine? Two. Two. Table nine, table 12. That's it. Then we're done. All right. This is the potato florentine. That's really good. I can't believe how quickly these specials are flying out. The specials weren't like that. I made something, and uh, everyone wanted it. That's incredible. It's so fun. <laughs> While the specials have clearly struck a chord with the customers, I like it. the old menu has hit a sour note. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Is <laughs> it me or the portion is humongous? Portions are very large. He's going to have dinner tonight, lunch tomorrow. I'll, whatever you don't need, I'll wrap. Pasta looks low. How is that not enough pasta? It's not even a full bowl. Danielle's asking me, why is that not enough? Our portions are ridiculous. I don't agree with them at all. Way too much food. Chicken goes on top of that. Look at that. Too much? Oh, my gosh. No one needs to eat that much. I feel like I'm hurting people given <laughs> putting that much food onto a plate. It's crazy. You want to take it home? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Wrap it up. And that. You want to wrap it up? OK. And all this tomorrow. <laughs> it's an hour into dinner service. And although many customers have finished eating, don't throw this out. I have no, to wrap it. No, don't throw that you. away. You're going to wrap that to go. Really? Surprise, surprise. They have not come close to cleaning their plates. Come here, two seconds. And Chef Ramsay wants to demonstrate how big the leftovers really are. Look, that's come back from the dining room, OK? Look at that on a normal sized plate. And that's been asked to go. That's an entree returned. So they got two meals for the price nope. of one. Our portions were so huge. Oh, such a waste. It was ridiculous. Just put them right here. How's that? Pretty good. That's yours. I mean, we might as well fucking change this as a to-go restaurant. During tonight's dinner service, there were some encouraging signs. Danielle took control of the kitchen, and the specials were well received. But the hot potato cafe is not even close to being out of the woods. Let's be honest. The hot potato cafe needs real significant changes, yeah? Not tweaking the menu. Hang on a second. Yeah, let's, let, let's start here. Here we go. Up. Boxes of food people oh took home tonight. Oh, my God. We get the point. Oh, shit. Jesus. That's the exact number that we gave away tonight. Appetizers to go, entrees to go, and even desserts to go. 
and it is embarrassing. Everything I worked for is in those boxes, and it's just leaving this restaurant. It's ridiculous. Not only are your food costs out of control, you're giving away double. Bang! You must be fucking mad. We cannot afford to do business like this one more day. So, I need all of you to come with me. Right now. Yeah, last one out. Close the door. Oh, my God. I need all of you to come with me. Completely outraged by the amount of leftovers taken away by customers. Last one out. Close the door. Chef Ramsay decides to take matters into his own hands. Oh, my God. Tomorrow will be a make or break day. We are relaunching this restaurant like you've never ever seen before. As a way to say goodbye to the old reputation of the hot potato cafe, the frozen potatoes, the oversized portions, we say goodbye by doing this. <laughs> Jesus Christ, don't strain the muscle. OK, up in the air. Goodbye. One, two, three. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. Well done. Well done. There is no need for a plate to be that big. I never want to see a plate like that again in my life. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Just a couple of days ago, Gordon was ready to walk out. But now, feeling a sense of hope, he, along with his staff, spend the night transforming Hot Potato Cafe into a fun, contemporary Philadelphia restaurant. Ladies, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, 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 wow. Let's go. We're a restaurant. We're a restaurant. Doesn't that look amazing? It's gorgeous. Isn't it lovely? I love it. Ready to go inside? Yeah. Here we go. Come in, please. Oh, oh my god. god! Oh my god! Oh my god! A nice lounge area. Oh, this is gorgeous! The walls have been freshly painted, clearly. So yes. what we needed. We've got some stunning artwork on there. Oh my god, the colors are gorgeous. None of that horrible vinyl, greasy stuff. New wooden tabletops. Yeah, yeah. And oh, by the way, Webstraw, the store. OK, they've donated $5,000 worth of dishes, pots, pans, oh china, you name it. 5000 Thank you. Yeah. It looks amazing! Yeah. Doesn't it? This is potato heaven. <laughs> yes. I feel overwhelmed. It's so much to take in. It's beautiful in here. I don't think it's anything I could have ever imagined for myself. This is beyond help. This is so huge, really. The most important change is the menu. It oozes potatoes, clearly, yes? This menu is not a tweak, it's an overhaul. So I brought in a very successful local restaurateur, yeah? So I want someone to mentor. Danielle, please welcome Richard Marsh. Rich, come in, please, sir. Good to see you. Come over. Yeah. Excellent. OK, I've hired this man for a month to mentor you, Danielle, to stand and support you. And he seriously, seriously knows his potatoes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good. It's a helping hand. Yes? A proper helping hand. OK? OK? So you're not left in the deep end. OK? Because you got it. It is a huge relief. I finally got someone that cares. Someone that's going to help me out. 21 years of age, I'm telling you, you're so composed. No one's told you that. Well done. I can finally do something. I can learn. I can learn how to do this <laughs> and do it right. Mm -hmm. And it's a great feeling. Just hours before the relaunch, Chef Ramsay shows the staff a sample of all the menu items, which, of course, includes a number of exciting potato appetizers, entrees, and side dishes. Start off with the soups, yeah? The starters, the appetizers. Hot potato soup. The fish town chowder, yeah, bacon, onions, clams, potatoes, and creams. The veggie, classic cheddar cheese, broccoli, and green onion. The entrees, potato rosti with smoked salmon, beautiful. French fries, sweet potato fries, parmesan fries, and mashed potatoes. That's it. Small, exciting, and vibrant, yeah? Gorgeous. I'm really excited to serve the new menu. Everything smells fresh, looks fresh, feels fresh. It's turned into potato heaven. There's one more surprise. Yeah. The Idaho Potato Commission 
have given you for the next three months of free supply of potatoes. Oh, my God. Guys, come on in. Oh, my God. Oh my God, she, they're going to save us so much money to have free products come in here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's our pleasure. Um, absolutely brilliant. We're a potato restaurant with free potatoes for three months. It's a new start. It's relaunch night, and everyone is already nervous. But Chef Ramsay has saved some startling news just minutes before the doors are about to open. Here's the bombshell. The man that destroyed the reputation of the Hot Potato Cafe, Mr. Spuddy Hell himself, is back. Oh, my God. The Philadelphia Weekly food critic, he's back in here tonight. It doesn't get any more serious than this. Tonight is where it all counts. Yes. The pressure was on. It was on all of us. Our asses are on the line, and it's unbelievable. Hi, welcome to the Hot Potato. Please come in, make yourself comfortable. This looks great. The last time I was in here, it just didn't look nice. This is a beautiful menu. It's amazing. You want to order a roast? You got it. Right, dining room's getting busy. You are going to immense pressure, but if I didn't think you could do it, you wouldn't be here. Make it work, yeah? Vocal, talking, understanding what's going on, yes? First ticket of the relaunch. OK, here we go. Loud and clear. Pierogies. Good. Chorizo hash. Traditional potato fish sticks. That's great. Nice and vibrant like that, yeah? Loud. You got another pierogies. I'm nervous for Danielle in the kitchen, but I know how tough she is, and if anybody can pull it off, it's Danielle. Pierogi up. Good, first ticket, well done, seven minutes. We're in business. Next. Shepherd's pie. Can somebody take this? Table two, pierogies. It's an hour into dinner service. Are you guys? And with customers impressed. Oh my god, it's so good. Delicious. <laughs> These are really on point. The night is off to a solid start, but the guest who can make or break the restaurant, the food critic of the Philadelphia Weekly, has just arrived. I'm uh, Brian McManus, I have a reservation. Yes, we do. OK, there's a critic here yet. He just arrived. You know how important this is with this critic coming back in here? Yeah. They normally never visit a restaurant, yeah? I know. Twice. Make sure we don't fuss over him too much where it becomes obvious, yes? Let's go. The last time that food critic was in here, he trashed the shit out of us. I'm very grateful he's given us another chance. He's going to make or break us tonight. Tonight is your night. Come on. Yes? OK. Come on. How are you this evening? How are you? Hi. My name's Brian. I'll be taking care of you. Potato soup. Potato soups and pierogies? Right, right. I'll be right back. Thank you. No problem. I got, this is going to try and get out as soon as possible. It's critics. I'm like, oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm nervous. But I'm confident. I'm like, what? why can't I do this? Brian, take this out. Right here. This is his. I have potato soup. I have your pierogies. For sure. Enjoy. Man, this is so, so, so very different. It's relaunch night, and the food critic from the Philadelphia Weekly is about to take his first bite. In his last review, he called the restaurant Spuddy Hell and ruined the restaurant's reputation. Man, this is so, so, so very different. Very smooth. It's good. So potato terrific. This is what we worked so hard for. And it's not spuddy hell anymore. It's spuddy heaven. Ironically, the man that virtually destroyed the restaurant with his review is now enjoying dish really after dish. Good. He said everything was good. They ate almost everything. He said he was full. The critic is just loving everything. Never did I think something so huge would happen. Oh, it's so amazing. It really is like the greatest feeling. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. We rocked it. He can't say anything wrong about the potato. We got three tickets left. Focus, focus, focus. All the way to the end. Come on. Come on. Seven, sloppy and veggie. Enjoy. Oh. You girls cleared the board. OK, Danielle. Nice. <laughs> These guys are done. <laughs> I've never served this many people in one night ever. Ever. In two years. That's crazy to me. It's going to be like this for months. And maybe, God forbid, we might catch up on our bills. Oh, my God. Calm down. It's OK. Nothing's wrong. I'm just blown away. This is so fucking amazing. I can't even describe it, like what's happening between all of us. 
Our relationships are better. We're all communicating. Like, it's crazy. Holy shit. After feeding well over 100 guests and having no dishes returned, Gordon has some final words for the staff. When I first arrived, honestly, I was looking at a family that had lost its drive, passion, and so fragmented. I honestly felt for the first time in five years in Kitchen Nightmares, I was wasting my time. But you showed me tonight that each and every one of you has got the capabilities to turn this around. But you, madam, you're going to explode. I believe in you. Now believe in yourself. It's incredible how much has changed in just a few days. Cooking wasn't really a huge aspiration of mine, but this whole thing has just changed me around 360. I'm really thankful for everything that's happened. This is a career that I want. Great family, great restaurants, and honestly, a great future. Stick with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think Chef Ramsay's amazing. Thank you. I mean, times <clears throat> with my family has been really rough the last couple years. But, you know, having this experience was probably one of the best days of our lives. Good night. Thank you. The other night when I walked out, I felt really depressed. And I actually felt I'd met my match for the first time. But on the back of that, tonight has been one of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had in Kitchen Nightmares. Now. The Hot Potato Cafe is the talk of Philadelphia. But for me, it's about an amazing turnaround of four women. Three aunts and one niece. God. Long live the power of women. The turnaround for the hot potato was amazing. I'm going to take you back to a table. How about that? And Gordon helped spread the word on the airways. Chef Gordon Ramsay, as you see here, busy now, hitting the road for another show, Kitchen Nightmares, from the Hot Potato Cafe. Thank you guys for coming in. And on the streets. Oh. <laughs> the city of Philadelphia has a new jewel that has the best potatoes in town. Hot Potato Cafe rocks! And the hot potato received rave reviews from the Philadelphia Weekly going from spuddy hell to new starch. Fishtown's Hot Potato Cafe went from spud dud to spud palace overnight. Overnight. Hey, I am so happy. Now, I love this place. There's nowhere else I want to be. Atmosphere quaint and homey, service friendly, helpful, food outstanding. I just can't even tell you how amazing this gift has been. People don't get opportunities like this in their lifetime. Oh, I love you. <laughs> On Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads to New Jersey, but somehow ends up in the tropics, where he faces one of the most disagreeable owners ever. Shut your mouth already! Chef Ramsay does his best to turn this disaster around. You cannot see. You don't know when to shut up. But it all might be for nothing. Oh! Because this tropical restaurant might be impossible to save. Oh, my God! I am devastated right now.